Hey, it's Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and it is Thursday. It is October 10th. This will be our chart lesson for the day, and uh, this is going to wrap it up for the week. No chart lessons on Friday, so uh, this is going to wrap our week up. Uh, really big trend up today. Then we had a correction here that broke the. There's a cup. There's a lot of stuff going on here today. There's a bigger two-tiered channel, and you can see how that midline of it kind of turn things until we came back down to the trend line again earlier uh, before, before we got a break and then we shot up to a new high it looks like we're correcting some again now so uh, everything played out pretty much there's also a this brown channel in here and we got a break and a new high on it before we sold off as well and then of course you have to narrow down into some uh, shorter term stuff uh, in here as well and you really need that shorter term stuff almost to trade this stuff because this blue pattern is at a very big level a lot of times I won't even have that on there but there was a chance it was going to come into play today um, so I did put it on there uh, it would have it it probably would have helped you a little bit here um, but you really don't get any trades off of it all day so uh, it's not a whole lot of help but you want to have it there just in case. So, you know, you want to be aware of it anyway. But now that you see it, I'm going to take it off just to make it a little less. Actually, I'll leave that midline on there because it does come back into play. You can see it coming into play all the way across here. And so we're kind of stuck between it and this trend line. And you can see that we got above it a little bit there, but it comes back. And that's why that looks like a triangle or kind of a. You'll see all these people that talk about flags and pennants and all that stuff. And that's what causes this stuff. It's just intersecting trends and trend lines and trend channel lines and mid lines and things like that. And that's what we're, that's all we've got going on here that makes this look like a pennant almost is that uh, we've got the trend line working up this holding, but you got the midline on the bigger pattern holding as well. And so it makes it look like a pennant. And uh, anyway, I'm going to back out here. We'll talk about the trades and good many of them today. And like I said, it was all uphill early. Uh, so, but seven o'clock came right in here on this little, just as we we're turning up on this brown, you would have drawn it off that. You wouldn't have had this previously, this brown one most likely. You draw it off that. If you drag it up, you just drag it up to the highs. And then you can see the midline drops right in there and fits real nicely. So. Um, so this is just a reversal here off of a correction and a bigger uptrend. And, uh, I like this one just cause it's a, you notice we got this coming down. We get the close outside. We try to go lower a couple of different times and we bounce each time. And then we make a higher low and a nice bullish bar. So I like entering there. Um, you all you're able to get out of that's a scalp. You don't end up getting a runner or anything, but, um, we end up just kind of chopping sideways. And then you get this shorter term blue trend line, trend channel. This is like a little spike up in a channel right here. And so it comes into play. And rather than bouncing off the brown tr trend line, we're really bouncing off the EMA and this blue. We're working inside this blue channel. So um, when we make a new low there, you come back and you come back to that trend line. And, and this actually intersects with it the EMA, the blue trend line, and the brown trend line. And that's why I like that one. Uh, it's a big bullish reversal type bar as well. So uh, as tight as that is, you may not get a second entry. So if you don't take that one, you're probably not going to get a, you may not get another entry. We actually do get a second entry here. Notice it runs up to the highs and comes back first entry, comes back second entry, and it's, Looks very similar type signal bar we saw here. Another big bullish one. I like entering there. Um, it backs up a little bit before it goes higher. Notice that is uh, when we open when we open down here. Um, we did have a little gap. It didn't take long to fill that gap though. And we bounce here off of that close from yesterday. And we just take off upwards and it really gets a little um, dangerous entering up here when you start to get that far away from the EMA, especially on an overshoot like this. But you had to say, well, maybe we're headed to the midline 
of the blue or the brown or both channels. And that's kind of what happened. We got a little resistance off the blue midline. Then we went to the brown channel midline. Uh, I did like this entry just because we're coming, we're going sideways here. And you test, you came down and you made that low. You went back up, you came back, you tested it again. You went back up, you came back and tested it again. And you get this real small bar. It's only like three ticks in that bar, relatively bullish. Uh, that's probably worth taking there. It's a little close to the highs. You're not back to the EMA. Um, there's some reasons to question it, but it, it is a double test uh, of support, and it is a real small, low risk bar. You're not risking a whole lot there, and if you and you might catch a good move that goes all the way up to the other side of the channel. Uh, doesn't turn out that way, but you do get a nice move. It does run up, you know, several points here. So I think it's six, five or six, seven points there before it turns back down. And there's one short you might take right here. Uh, you got a double top, so a new high, first entry, second entry, and it is right at the EMA. And we did just come off the brown, and we're probably coming back to the brown trend line, you would think. So you may take that short, but I think I'm telling you, this has been a really strong uptrend to that point, and you're probably being a little risky trying to go long, but that is a confirmed trend and that is a failed second entry long. So I'll probably at least make that one green. It's close. Um, it's probably a fairly low risk trade, but at the same time, this has been a strong uptrend and that's just never a smart idea trying to pick tops. Uh, it would have been a good trade. And then we come back up and we just start working sideways back to the trend line. Uh, we make it, we touch it here. We make a higher low here, but look at all that resistance. It's just, it's just really hard to go long into that resistance. And then we come back and we test it again and we do get a little close outside and we get a little smaller bar here. There's just barely enough room. Maybe there may only be enough to get a four tick failure. So you may let this break higher and drop a limit order right at the high. And if you had them, you probably could have got filled on that. And then let it, because it did open on its, or close on its high and open on its low and move up a little bit before it ticked back there. So you could have got filled on prices dropping back there. And that would have given you enough room. It didn't matter. It takes on off. But you still had to be aware of that. And this is like a little spiking channel. It spikes up and then kind of goes into this channel right here. You can see that channel working higher right there until we finally get up to the midline of the blue and then we start trending down. There's a trend line coming down here, but I wouldn't take any shorts right there. This is similar to that other one. Um, you got a little room there, but this one's, we don't ever get a close below the EMA. Notice how you push through there. Before you came back so this one's a little more risky and by the time you get through you don't have much room it probably would have worked it looks like it would have worked but and we do have a close outside but i'd want to get a little better setup than that this looks too short term uh, but you do want to draw your trend line off of this just in case and then notice we, we actually confirmed it right here this bigger one too but you don't really have a whole lot of evidence of what's going on yet except for the shorter term one but notice what happens. You actually get come back and make a high, and then you you make this test. There's a double test of this level across here. I don't have my line. Let me put it on there so you can see it. And that's why I like this one. Notice you made that high. You came back and tested it once. You went lower, came back and tested it again. And then you get this big bearish bar. Uh, we probably trapped some people there. Boom. You get a little lower high right here. This is an inside bar, but if you draw that trend line right there, um, it's still a lower high when it breaks lower there. That's very bearish. Normally, I tell you this is your signal bar, um, but there's a good chance we're going to make at least another leg down like this one. And if this is played out, we may get a big move down. And uh, so I like taking that one. You don't know that it's going to do this, but you're just, you know, you're just trying to maybe catch a little more move down. And that turns out to be trade of the day almost. So, um, 
But that one's real close. You could argue for that to be green, really, because it does, it's not a because it's technically this is your signal bar. So keep that in mind. But you couldn't get any higher because of that trend line. So it's like a you touched it and then you opened down here and tried to trade back up and touched it again. And this drops on down. You're getting too far down here now. Um, you got a trend line working up here. You get a close outside. You move to a new high. And then finally you make a lower high. This is another one that's real close to being green. Because it's just kind of in the middle of something here. Uh, but this trend line has played out. You get the break. You move up. You try to go higher. Uh, you move up here. You go down. You come back. And then you come back again. So there's a double test there. It looks almost like a repeat pattern right here. And that's that's the main reason I like this and made it red is because it's it's basically a repeat pattern. But you can see right there. And then this is that lower high almost just like that, except this is actually the signal bar this time. So I like going short there. And, and you would expect prices to still try to come down here because you're right in the middle of the... Uh, Trend line and the trend channel line, you're just kind of floating around the midline here, right in the middle. Um, so your expectation would be that we'd try to come on down here uh, now that we didn't go up here. So it doesn't work out that way, but you still get an easy scalp, and then it turns and comes back up. And where does it go? It comes right back up to that trend line. Um, I would wait for this one to play out. Notice you get a close, it tries to come back, makes a lower high, but it's right off that trend line and gives you a big bearish bar. You may not could have got in this one because it gaps open right there. It gap, it, that one closes on its low and this one opens on its high and takes off. So you may not have been able to get in that trade, but if you could, by all means, take it. And you might try a limit order, see if it would come back. I don't think it would have though. And uh, off it goes. And, of course, we bounce down here on the other side, exactly where an equal distance. You can see the midline's in play. It's a perfect channel coming down here. And we run up. You get a close outside, a new high, and you make a lower high right there. And this actually broke higher and turned and went out the other side. This goes short right there. It bounces, and then it looks like we're going sideways again. There's a double test right here, and this is a real small bar near the lows. It would have worked. Um, and it is a double test of the midline. So you may take that one. I didn't mark it. Uh, at this point, it was really hard to determine what the market was trying to do here. Uh, it could go on up or it could turn back down. Uh, it's supposed to be going higher because we just came off the low side. But you see right here, we just come off the high and it's supposed to be going down here. And it didn't. It went back. So sometimes it doesn't do what it's supposed to do and what, what the odds tell you it's going to do. Um, so you, you're taking a little chance. So here, I'd probably want to wait on the higher low, which comes right here with another bullish bar. Then you could jump in. And this would have been a nice little move back up. Uh, but this one was a little riskier. It is a double test, though. It is a nice bullish bar near the lows. The only problem is, is we're in a downtrend. Um, and we're kind of in no man's land in the middle between the trend line and the trend and the medium uh, midline. So that makes it questionable what might be going on there. So I'd probably want to see a little more evidence with this higher low that we're probably going to bounce here. And this is depth, but this definitely looks like a little range here by the time we bounce again. So and this looks like a little failed break lower below that double bottom. And if there was a little more room in the EMA there, I'd I'd probably make that one blue. But with not much room there, there's too big a chance that it turns down, but it doesn't. It pushes on up and comes back, and you get that higher low and another. And for when a bar trades all the way down here and then trades all the way back up and closes, that takes a lot of buying to do that. So that's probably a good sign right there. And you can see it takes on off. And that gets you in the 2 o'clock hour. And that's another thing. This is so close to 2 o'clock um, to be counter trend trading. I'm not crazy about it. Because this is definitely a downtrend now, and you can see that. And there's been some very strong sell-offs in this little move, too. So uh, that's a little bit worrisome there. But, yeah, it wasn't a bad day. Um, everything kind of played out as you would expect. Uh, there's There was a lot going on with this chart. I'll get this blue one out of the way there. Just 
that cleans it up a little bit. That's what you should have been playing. These two with the shorter term stuff in in the middle. But it, you needed that big blue one because it did explain why prices only got back to here versus back up here. And it did explain why we got a little bounce right down in here, wherever. Well, I can't remember if it was here or here. I've already taken the line off. But um, anyway, um, what else? There was something else I wanted to share with you. Oh, hold on. I'm going to pause it just a minute. I'll be right back. Okay, this is just a little funny that another trader shared with me, and I thought I would share it with y'all. Um, it just shows that sometimes people do listen to things that I talk about when I get on my soapbox, so to speak. But, uh, you know, one of the things that I tell you is if you really want to do this, don't ever give up. And this is going to lead into something else before I close up today. But uh, he sent me this, and be sure you look at it real closely, because if you don't look closely, you might miss what's really going on. But... The theme of this is don't ever give up. And this relates to our trading. If you really want to make it at this, don't ever give up. And um, you can see this little old frog. He's about to go down, but he's hanging on with dear life. And if he's going down, he's taking this bird down with him. So uh, and that's kind of how we need to be with trading. And, and uh, so the gentleman showed me this. It does tell you that people tend to occasionally listen to things I try to tell you. And uh, But, yeah, don't ever give up. If you want to do this. Um, you got to hang in there for a while and that's going to lead into what I'm going to tell you. I'm going to try to make this short and sweet, but, uh, I've had a couple of different people, um, that have come to me lately and, you know, and they're, they're struggling and, and they can't figure out why they don't get this because they've studied real hard and, and it made me think about it again. And uh, there was actually somebody else that posted one time that I was scaring people by saying that this was hard when you could learn this in a couple of three months. And you can't learn to read a chart in two or three months. I don't care who you are. Um, and and what, the, what, the way I like to explain this is, is this chart speaks a language. Uh, price action actually speaks a language. And you can learn it. And you can learn to anticipate and understand what it's doing. And no, you won't get it 100% right. But, you know, usually by 9 or 9.30 every day, I, I can tell you the market's going to do one or two things. And it'll usually do one or two of those things. And, and a lot of times I can tell you exactly what it's going to do. And it'll do that 90, 95% of the time. You don't know exactly where it's going to do it at, but you know what's going to, how the day's going to end up. And the reason I know that is because I can read the chart. And I've been doing this for, I've been looking at it, print to it all day long for 20 years, 15 plus years. It's going on 20 years, really. And um, so the idea, the way you learn to do this is you can't just learn some rules that based it on what we teach here and then print a manual and all that. Those you got to know because that's the basis of it. That's the start of it. But the real key is learning the language of this chart and being able to read it. And the only, and it's just like learning, let's just say you're a, a a natural born English speaker and you've never spoken French. Do you really think you're going to pick up a, a French book and read it to read through it once or twice and be able to speak French fluently? No, you got to learn the words, study the words and then the phrases. And then you might learn to speak broken French. And then eventually, you, you know, you may not ever speak fluent French, but you can speak it enough and understand enough to get by after a while. But think about how long that takes and you have to immerse yourself in it and really go live there with a the culture and speak it every day. That's the only way you get really fluent at it. Uh, you can't just read a book and and go try to speak it every now and then and expect to be fluent. It doesn't work like that. It's impossible. And it's the same way trading is reading this chart. You can't read a book or two and then come out here and trade for a month or two and then think you're going to understand you that you can read this chart and understand what prices are doing. It's not possible because it's a different language and it takes a while to learn it. And you have to learn to see all the nuances and it'll do one thing every day for 30 days. And all of a sudden it'll completely switch gears and it's doing another thing for another 30 days. And you get, then you start to learn that and then it switches gears again. And it does another thing for another 30 to 60 days. And then you slowly get used to that and then it switches gears again. And it takes a long time to go through all the phases that the market can show you. So it takes a long time to learn this language. And, but it, but don't make no mistake. It is a language that can be learned and you can learn to read this chart and have a good idea 
every morning by looking at the early start of the morning and knowing what was going on. And what brought this up today was the trader said, you know, where I'm having a hard time is whether to decide if it's going to be a, a range day or a trend day. And, and if you're looking at this early on, we got strong resistance here. So you're thinking, hey, this might be a range day. But look how we've got a trend working up here. We're making higher highs and higher lows. We got some resistance here, but we're still making higher highs and higher lows. And eventually it pushes through it. There's just a lot of resistance there. So there's clues here if you know what to look for to say, hey, this is probably going higher. Um, but you can't just look at this occasionally and know that this is going to be a trend day or a range day. And even like this, it still might have been a range day, but you'll get some clues early on. It won't break off and take off like break out and take off like that. So the fact that you can't see it yet. Is just simply because you're not fluent enough in price action and don't have enough experience watching prices print to a chart to see it yet. So even if you know what the book or the rules and everything else, like the back of your hand, you still have to learn to read this chart. And so the rules alone are never going to get you there. So make sure, because I think that's where people get caught up in this, is they think that they know the book and they know all the rules and they know what to expect and they still can't put it together. But that's because they can't read the chart yet. You've got to get fluent with what the prices are doing and understand what they're doing. And, and even then you'll get tripped up. But for the most part, on most days, 90% of the time, you'll know exactly what's going on and know what to expect. And you may not know exactly where it's, you know, like today, we got this break. You know it's going to turn up and probably try to make a attempt at a new high. The key is you don't know where it's going to happen, so you got to learn to figure this out and be able to read and figure where the reversals are coming and, it just takes a whole lot to it. So I didn't really want to get off on this today, but it just seems like I've had a couple of different people come to me lately and that's where they're struggling. Um, they can't figure out why they can't quite get it. But the reason is they just haven't done this long enough. You got to do this longer. So never give up. Don't give up. Just keep working at it. Don't be so eager to go trade. Don't be a donator. I, there's so many people that come and the first thing I tell them is don't until you can double a SIM account a five or $10,000 SIM account. Don't even think about going live because all you're going to do is donate your money to, to traders that know what they're doing, but it never fails. People try to trade and they blow an account out and then they, then they're mad at themselves and they're mad at everybody else. They're mad at me. And, but when I told them, don't do it to begin with, because you don't have the experience to do this. If you can't read this chart, the odds are you might, yeah, you might win a trade here and there and get lucky, but you're not going to consistently, you're not going to make money. You're going to be a donator. And I can promise you that don't be a donator. If you're not going to do anything else, don't be a donator. Get on the SIM chart, SIM, uh, get on a SIM account and trade until you can double or triple account, uh, five or 10,000. Then maybe you're ready to start dipping your toes in live and you'll probably, there'll still be a, a learning curve because now you're going from somebody else's fake money to real money. So there'll be a little emotional change there. So you can't jump right into it. Even then you might just start out scalping some singles here and there just to get the feel for it, to get your nerves right. And don't try to build up real quickly. You might only start out with one or two. And when you get to where you can scalp out regularly, then you say, okay, I'm ready to go to a, uh, a runner. So maybe you start trading three or four or five, uh, I wouldn't even go that far. I'd say maybe you're ready to trade three and you'll scalp out two and try to keep a runner on the run on the ones that are, you want to hold runners on, which are generally on trend days off the key entry points, the trend lines, and then on range days when they failed breaks out the lows and the highs, that's where you look for runners. When you get choppy like this right here, you don't want to try to hold runners unless there's a failed breakout because you're just going to probably get a scalp and it's going to back up and go the other way again. So, um, uh, but yeah, the key to this thing is just hanging in there and not being in a rush to be a donator because you're going to donate in the beginning, no matter what. And everybody thinks they're smarter than everybody else. Everybody else thinks they're smarter than all the other traders and they think they're going to be different, but you're not, you're going to be a statistic if you don't listen to me and I'm not trying to scare anybody. So, uh, for that trader that says to stop scaring people. I'm just trying to tell you realistically what to expect. I'm not trying to scare anybody. Uh, maybe it's good if I do scare you because you'll be less likely to jump in there and be a donator. So, uh, 
people that come in here and say that kind of stuff have an agenda and don't think that there's anything less than an agenda when people come in here and say stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, they got an agenda. But anyway, um, I didn't mean to get on that soapbox today, uh, but hopefully that's helpful to some of you. Don't give up. Continue to learn. The key is trade, getting as much screen time as you can, but then you have to study your chart at the end of every day. Take as many sim trades as you can, following the rules. Don't worry if you're wrong or right. Enter the trade. Let it play out. If you get stopped out, you get stopped out. If you're right, you're right. But don't monkey with your trades once you enter them. Let them play out. And, just, and then at the end of the day, that's when you worry about it. Go back and study these trades, all your trades. Learn your tendencies. Correct them. And then once you're through studying your trades, study the chart. Figure out why prices took off right here. Why did they take off right here? Why did they take off down right here and down right here? Why did they do that? Because that's where those key entry points are. Notice where all the big moves come from. The key entry points. Why did this big move come down from here? Because that was the midline. Why did this big move bounce up right here? Because it bounced at a key entry point. That's where you're looking for these things to happen. Look where all these nice moves right here came from. Look where these came from. Right off this key entry point. Look where this one came from. Study that. And that's, I mean, that's how you figure this stuff out. By You go and look, and all right, where did the big moves come? And then study those big moves until you figure out why they happened there. There's a reason they happened there. There's some kind of support or resistance or reversal thing that causes them to reverse there. Why did prices bounce right here? Because that's the other side of an equal distance trend channel. That's where you would expect it to bounce. And look, it bounces there. Same thing, why it turned down here? Because that's your midline. Why did it turn down up here? Because that's your uh, trend channel line on the other side. And where did it go? It moved all the way back down to the trend line and started back up again. That's the key to this, figuring out why it does those things. And I can tell you why it does them, because they're important key entry points and there's there will be some setup there and most nine times out of ten as well that helps you get into it every now and then there won't be a good setup that fits our rules but it'll still bounce there and you just have to watch it go unfortunately but most of the time you'll get a setup so anyway i'm gonna get out, i'm gonna shut it down it's almost 30 minutes worth uh this is gonna wrap it up for the week no chart lessons on fridays i'll be back monday i'm done for today this is mac with priceactiontradingsystem.com and we'll see you next time.